Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Michelle Aubin and Linda Lang. Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. I'm Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com, and I'm here with my co-host today, Michelle Aubin. Michelle? Hi, Linda. Uh, I've been away for a while, and it's so great to be back having a conversation with you. It's so much fun. So um, glad to be doing this episode. Well, we are definitely looking forward to it. And our topic today is on spirit encounters, whether that's ghost, goblin, or ghoul, or something in between. So, Michelle, You said you've had some experiences. I've had some experiences. Let's have a great conversation. Yeah. So what this brings up in the moment for me is this uh, understanding that the visual world that we perceive, the physical things around us, is not the entire uh, realm of existence, that there's a whole bandwidth of existence, and people have different words for this. I like to use the word multidimensional. Sometimes people just use etheric. Um, There's a lot of different concepts about beings that are not in human form, whoever they may be. So I'm just going to open it up with that. Anything you want to add to that idea? Well, I think think that's a great introduction. And a part and parcel to this is, is the whole... I like to call it the dead bug theory. You know, we have some people here on earth that think, you know, when you die, you die. And yet science tells us that energy can't be discreated, that it can change form. But, you know, once it's there, it's there. So I've had a number of experiences, even as a young child, my grandmother's place had a, a hallway and a few rooms in the upstairs that, I mean, everybody could tell there was something different about this, the energy of this place, because it was like, it was cold and it was scary. And even the people that that lived in the house could tell that. So that was probably my first experience with, knowing that there's something going on here that probably shouldn't be here. And so what happened when you were young? Did you avoid that area? Was it just sort of a natural thing to avoid it? Or did did you all get together and dare each other to go in the hallway? I can imagine myself being young and being like, I dare you to go there. Uh, What was that like? Well, for the most part, we would avoid it, except... uh, one of my older sisters actually lived with my grandma and her bedroom was at the end of that hall. Her bedroom felt okay, but going down that hall to get to her bedroom. So even she felt that. So every night, you know, she would go and like run down that hallway to get to her bedroom where she felt safe. So that, that was really our experience of, of avoiding, except when we went, to visit our sister's mm-hmm. bedroom to you know hang out with her in her bedroom but uh, yeah it it was an old old house it's being destroyed now it's, it's like a 1800s farmhouse mm-hmm. so you know you just don't know who was living there and could actually still be there on some dimension in that space even though the house is no longer there it's interesting to think about how entities, beings um, can inhabit a place and maybe not even know that they're not in the physical anymore. And I've heard, I've heard people talk about this who do clearings and who assist those entities to transition to other realms to the spiritual realm where they and there's a there's an element involved sometimes of helping them understand that you're stuck here and that the 
those entities can be playing a loop almost of something. And because we are all creators and manifestors in this dimension and in other dimensions, they can be recreating something in that dimension and not realizing that they are the ones creating it. So you got right? to bless the space clearers. We actually yes. had a space clearer on the show. Uh, a couple of episodes back. So I encourage anyone to have a listen to the shamanic space clearing episode because it was fascinating. But the other thing I'd like to say probably is that, you know, sometimes these spirit encounters, you know, sometimes they have that kind of creepy or weird feeling to them. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's like, I remember after my mom passed, she would give us little signs like crazy little signs like my sister's doorbell would ring and my sister lives in the country she'd stick her head out there's nobody around she'd go sit down the doorbell would ring again so it was just little signs like that that you know mom was there it's easier for spirits who want to give messages to bring them through uh, electrical things Yes. I have that a lot with my sister. We'll be on the phone and we'll be talking about certain topics and we get clicks and buzzes and they are not your typical phone sounds. They're really bizarre and noticeable and we'll go, oh, do you think someone's listening in and we go we we actually include them in the conversation whoever we think it is we'll go okay I hear you you can join in and if you know if you're the if you're the one we've been talking about right it, so I consider that um I wouldn't call it ghost but I would call it encounter I like that yeah. word that you and it's not uh, malevolent in any way right no I used to, I used to have a spirit um who would come and and transpose itself on the light in our cold room in the basement and so what, does that mean? what that means what does that mean? is i actually didn't notice it at first because a light bulb radiates light right so i would turn the light on and maybe it would work maybe it wouldn't work maybe it would work and then turn itself off and i just thought the light bulb was going so i would go and change a light bulb didn't help you know got my husband to have a look at it to see if there was a electrical issue we replaced the the light fixture it was still doing that and then one day i went down and i noticed that the bulb had like an aura like an orb was transposed on top of the bulb that it was a different the light had a different quality than normal and sure enough turned the light out and so i developed this relationship started talking to it i didn't hear any responses back but sometimes i would get a yes or no through the light turning off and there was one wow. day I, I went down i was in the cold room i was looking for something and it turned the light off right and it wouldn't turn it back on and i'm like if you don't turn this light back on, I'm going to go get the flashlight. And so it turned on and then turned off right away. And I kind of like, okay, <laughs> that's it. So I tromped upstairs, got the flashlight, came back downstairs and the light stayed on. It just, it didn't turn off again. It was just like playing with me. That's like a jokester. Do yeah. you know who that was? I don't know who it was, but interestingly enough, it's been it's probably been a, a couple of years since we've had any issues so i gather whatever it was doing here it completed so it doesn't i love hearing that story because it's this interaction it first of all it's playful second of all you you spoke to it as if you would anyone else like come on i need the light if you don't do this i'll get a flashlight and it doesn't sound like you had fear. It doesn't sound like you were, you know, in that place of kind of hopelessness, helplessness, right? You're like, oh. okay, come on. 
Yeah, you can tell if there's an energy someplace that does have that kind of negative vibe. And this was really harmless as far as I could tell. Yeah, there was let's, no... So let's talk about that from, not to interrupt you, but let's talk about that. Like how you can know this is a energy that is okay to interact with, not okay to interact with. We have our own system in our bodies, which tells us, I believe, that, okay, there's something going on, but I've, I, uh, I've heard an interesting um, theme talked about, which is sometimes if you have fear, you're actually picking up on the other being's fear. And it may not be your own fear, and it may not be a signal that you should be afraid, but that you're picking up on someone that passed over maybe who is in fear. I thought that was an interesting concept to consider. It's quite interesting. And uh, I suspect completely possible. I wouldn't say a hundred percent that every time you, you know, your body signals caution to you uh, with regards to this kind of uh, encounter. Um, it's not necessarily always that way because I have mm -hmm. had encounters with some uh, spirits that definitely I would want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> if you understand right. what I'm saying. Especially, uh, yes, with your shamanic training, discerning that is important. Yeah. Yeah. Your, and your body knows it's, uh, you know, very much like, you know, meeting someone and having kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling or that kind of repulsion or that, you know, something creepy is going on here. Yeah. Kind of sense. I think everyone can relate and tune into those body senses. Uh, I've had those feelings as well, but I will say I went through a period of years ago, waking up at night and feeling like something's in the room. And I think a lot of people have that feeling. Um, and I jumped to the conclusion that it was negative and I'd get the pounding heart and I'd get the kind of panic uh, response. And one of the things I learned over time with sort of unwinding this, it wasn't always easy for me to do to get to this place that I am now is discernment and learning that yes, there can be someone in the room, but that they can be there for a, a positive purpose. Let's use the word, let's just use the word angels, right? Like, yes, I felt something in the room. Maybe it was an angel. Maybe it was a guide. Maybe it was uh, a helper and learning in, you know, at 3 a.m., waking up to that wasn't necessarily a reason to panic, right? So it's important to, if you're feeling like that, that cold feeling like you did in the hallway in your grandmother, like that's, that's one kind of signal being like, okay, there's a, there's a being here with me. I want to figure out who this is. And if they have my best interest in mind and that I have the, I have the tools to do that is a whole other um, way to go, a whole other conversation. A whole other way to go. The one thing that I would maybe share would be a particular experience I've had with, I'm going to say a spirit that, that was not a comfortable spirit. And it actually woke me up through the mm. night and okay. three nights in a row and I could see it and it almost looked like a mummy and had oh. oozing uh, oozing stuff coming out of it and it was trying to pour something on me so the first wow. night I woke up you know and there it was and as soon as as soon as I woke up it was gone second night uh, was was actually when it was starting to pour and again I woke up and it was gone. And the third night was really interesting because it was upside down. 
its head was on top of my head and it was trying to pour something on me. And then I thought, okay, I've got to definitely do something about this. And actually what I had done, this was a years ago and I was much younger in my shamanic training. I contacted my, uh, my Kumu, my Huna teacher. We got on a Skype call and sure enough, there was something in my house that had this entity attached to it. And so I just wrapped it in, in black cloth. I brought it back to me uh, in, to Hawaii next time I went, but it stayed in that black cloth for a couple of months. As soon as I put it in, in that black cloth, I didn't have any issues. Mm. It, didn't, it wasn't trying to do anything to me. Uh, anymore. What it was trying to do, what it was trying to pour on me, I have no idea. But it, it really opened my eyes to, you know, not everything is all light and love right. and joy, that there is this other layer in creation. Now, you know, if you go further up that chain, it probably is all love and light, but there are some steps before we get to that place. So if anyone is having that kind of encounter, I would definitely suggest that they find someone to help them. A house clear like Barry Farthing, who was here uh, on the podcast earlier, or um, if they know it's specifically attached to an object, to wrap it in a black cloth and then take it to someone to be released because that spirit needs to be set free as well. It's on an evolutionary path and it's not moving forward when it's in that place. I really love that you shared this Linda, because our Western culture doesn't acknowledge this reality, but every other culture on the planet does. And in my own process of healing, I've gone through many changes and um, understand, you know, understandings of how to clear my space, clear my energy field, discern what is my essence versus someone else's essence, and to, and I'm still in that process, I don't feel like I'm done learning that, but it's a, um, something I don't question anymore that um, this kind of thing can happen, that, the, that a physical object can have this kind of energy with it, a place can, other people can, when we interact with certain people that have, if an object can have an entity attached to it like this, people can have that. And to, to learn, this is, this is who I am, and I have the right to set an energetic boundary, and you entities, people, physical people, non-physical, cannot interact with my energy field unless I give you consent. And your, your knowledge of shamanic, you know, you, you're having that teacher was so great that you could, you know, you knew what to do, wrap it in a black cloth. Um, I've never had such a, an experience as that, but I have definitely said to energies, you're not welcome in this space. Only certain vibration is welcome in my home, in my space. Um, I've installed alarm systems in my aura. I, I don't know what, I, what made me come up with that, but I at one point came up with, okay, I'm going to set an alarm system so that if, it, if an entity any time of day or night wants to interact with my energy field, I wake up or I'm alerted to it. And it works. <laughs> I love it that, works. Michelle. I love that. So, and I think it's a fantastic idea, actually. So I'm, I'm going to assume you did that specifically with intent, or was there some yes. other ritual or something else you did to create that? It was very simple, and it was, um, I want to convey, I didn't do it. It's not out of fear or panic right? Not, nothing like that. It was just coming to this place of like, I prefer a certain environment around me and within me. I prefer a certain vibration. 
So what so I'm it, hearing, it, it, if you don't mind, um, yes, is that instead of coming from a place of fear and establishing that alarm, you came from a place of sovereignty to establish yes. that alarm. And that is a totally different energy. Completely. And I, and I did it from, I love that word sovereignty because yes, that's, I had been reading a lot about that concept, spiritual sovereignty. And that concept was really um, a helpful part of my journey in healing some physical problems. I had a long, a long journey of illness. And so sovereignty being, um, when we like when we detox our diet, we can detox our energy, and these things be it's very so it's very simple. At first, it can sound complicated or it sounds esoteric, and the more I do it, the more normal it becomes, and it's almost like a daily thing of like, all right, here's my here's my home, I'm gonna clean it, I'm gonna vacuum, but I'm also going to determine the vibe in my home and I'm going to determine the vibe in my body home, right? We can do that. So you had asked, did I do a ritual? And pretty much no. It was like me lying in bed being like, all right, I'm tired of getting like woken up by I don't know what. And I did ask for help from my helper team, spiritual helper team in the sense of saying, um, you know, help me put a boundary and um, help clear whatever is not of the highest vibration from my space so that I can sleep at night and install this alarm system so that I don't have to be vigilant while I sleep. I don't have to look over my shoulder and say, what's going on? I can relax. That really was the motivation. I just want to sleep. So I'm going to install this alarm system. And uh, it worked. <laughs> That's all it really was. Well, I think it's brilliant, Michelle. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. So we did touch very briefly on the topic of entities attached to people. And I think that might be an interesting topic someday in the future. Oh yeah, it's a rich topic. Yeah, and I just I only brought that up to say if you can, if you have an object or a hallway that has this kind of stuck thing that that also happens with people. Again, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be kind of like panicked or helpless. We're not helpless. That's the biggest learning I've had in the past couple of years with this concept of sovereignty is that we are not helpless with this. So I want to, maybe we can wrap up on that note because um, it's actually a hopeful conversation to say we have tools. So this has been really fun, Linda, and I look forward to our next conversation. Well, Michelle, I've been loving it too. I hope our audience is enjoying it. Certainly, you know, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.